Nothing in this podcast is intended as investment advice and the people in this podcast may hold positions in the stocks they talk about. Do not buy any investment based solely on a tip or recommendation. Please do your own research. The Sunday Roast presents 12 Stocks for the 12 Days of Christmas. Merry Christmas, everyone. Thank you for listening. Welcome to the 12 Stocks for the 12 Days of Christmas. I'm Phil Carroll, and today we're joined by Leon Kurtzer, CEO of Jubilee Metals. Merry Christmas, Leon. Oh, thank you very much. Merry Christmas to you. Yeah. So for those listeners who may not know Jubilee's story, could you please give them an overview of the company? Yeah, sure. No problem. I mean, Jubilee uh, is a company that focuses on the extraction of a variety of metals out of wastes or perceived wastes from the industry. Uh, we are operational in South Africa and in Zambia, where we look to expand quite rapidly into copper and cobalt. If you look at history, uh, uh, the history of Jubilee, over the past two, maybe more like three years, we've developed and own operations where we've demonstrated to the industry our ability to extract these metals from the waste at an exceptionally high efficiency. We have just entered the copper uh, space as well on the back of the success in South Africa, uh, and we look to expand rapidly our copper and cobalt footprint. So ju- on the back of the success we've achieved at our operations in South Africa and in Zambia, we look now to, to nearly quadruple our production and operational footprint in Zambia on the back of the assets that we've already secured in Zambia, in copper and in cobalt. Excellent. And that really summarizes what we are uh, as Jubilee today. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there was obviously um, on the sort of back end of October, there was a, a trading update and it, it detailed the fact that you'd eliminated about 5.3 million of historical debt during the year, leaving a robust balance sheet and the financial capacity to pursue further opportunities within the copper operations in Zambia. Do you feel 2023 will be a good year for Jubilee with that out of the way? Oh, yeah, no, I think there's two critical things that are out the way. Um, as you've mentioned, you know, cleaning up our balance sheet so we can use it for our expansion into copper and cobalt. And the second part is completing two critical uh, operations. One is the significant <coughs> expans- expansion in South Africa. And the second is that first copper cobalt operational integrated from concentrated through to refinery now being fully commissioned in Zambia. So we really are poised to now use that footprint, use our balance sheet assets already secured to massively expand into copper and cobalt. If I was just to go back in history a little bit, let's say go back uh, four or five years, where was Jubilee four or five years ago in terms of market cap and also what you were doing? Four or five years ago, we were trying to convince the industry, trying to convince the investor market that what we knew was doable from our technical work and our engineering teams, that it actually could be achieved. We faced an industry who were convinced that the waste is waste and therefore best kept untouched. We faced an investor market who simply didn't believe a company valued at less than 30 million pounds could actually execute such a a large strategy. And then we wound wound back then, we were maybe eight to 10 people um, as Jubilee. Today, uh, we've taken the market cap up nearly tenfold. We are a work complement of nearly 800 uh, people, most of which are highly qualified processing engineers, and we have a tremendous set of assets uh, under our portfolio. So we we have uh, officially 10 bagged this company over the last four or five years. And do you envisage that that's possible again over the next five years in terms of, I mean, you talked about four times uh, production levels coming forward. Copper obviously is buoyant, uh, even though it keeps getting banged down a little bit. And we did obviously yeah. the copper special, uh, yeah. and even even the suite of uh, platinum metals that they're surely going to be in in a lot of demand over the coming years. Absolutely, I mean, all we've done as Jubilee to date with all that growth is demonstrate what is possible. Um, we haven't yet grabbed the opportunity. We've simply demonstrated how we can extract chromes and PGMs out of waste without grabbing that full opportunity. We've just demonstrated at relatively small scale what can be done with copper and cobalt. 
It's only now on the back of that demonstration that we are now set to actually grab the opportunity. And you're right. If you look at the copper, um, the world, you know, it can't be sick permanently. Uh, it needs copper uh, to grow. It's reliant on the copper to grow. And we're finally getting that signs out of the big economies that these structural issues within China, the relaxation of the COVID, which is so desperately needed for their own economy, is finally starting to be spoken about that it might be reduced, might be limited. And, and that's what we're waiting for. Um, we know there's a pent up demand for these metals. That's just when it gets released. Yep. And in terms of the amount of money you've spent to to upgrade Jubilee over the last two years, how much money have you actually internally spent? Because I think that's what people don't quite understand. You have a 300, 300 million pound market capitalization, but you haven't borrowed any money to do what you've done. You've spent this from internal, uh, basically, revenue and profit. So how much have you actually spent in the last two years? Oh, it's enormous. I mean, if you look at over just the last two years, capitalizing South Africa, the massive footprint we've built there, the significant presence in Zambia, we're in well in excess of 150 uh, to 180 million dollars of direct investment going into our company just to capitalize and build. And that excludes some of the additional assets we've acquired from where we'll grow going forward now. Um, so we've firmly believed in investing uh, into our into our business model. We've kept our overhead trimmed and slim to ensure that we are able to have cash available to drive into our investment and drive our growth. Uh, so we've made a significant investment. Uh, and it, it's reflected if you look at our asset value within our group, our real tangible asset value within our group, how that is significantly grown over the past two years. So this $150, $180 million that you've obviously taken from revenues and, and, uh, and profit in the last couple of years, this, I presume, is going to start being paid out to shareholders in the not too distant future. Exactly. There's two ways you pay out to shareholders, and that's deliver growth on your investment, so it's, which is reflected into your share price. That's a key, key focus immediately for our company as we now look to capitalize on that investment. And you're right. Uh, once these, this capital phase of our company, as we expand our Zambian and copper uh, production footprint, as that capital starts tapering off, we actually look forward to that day to return that cash back to shareholders uh, for the support and investment they have made in our, in our company. Okay, great. So as you know, this is the 12 stocks for the 12 days of Christmas. So we ask every guest, what is your favorite ever Christmas present that you received? As corny as it might sound, my favorite Christmas present, I would say, is when you get days off over Christmas without a single call from the operations or from the company, meaning it is going well. That family time is sacred, and that'll be my best gift this December, hopefully, as well. Okay. And the second question, what is the best gift you've ever given to somebody? <laughs> Equally. I think there's no better gift than time. Everything else that you buy, as special as it might seem at the moment, is great. But if you give some quality time, I think that's the best mm. gift you can give. And tell us, Leon, I've always wondered what, what it's like having a Christmas in, obviously, in the Southern Hemisphere, because obviously, you know, we see Australia, we see them going down to the beach, you know, in the obviously yes. Northern Hemisphere, it's extreme. Generally, it's cold, everyone's huddled together, you've got the fires burning, you've got the chestnuts roasting. Tell us what, what your sort of typical Christmas day would be and also the sort of meals that you, you would eat. Well, it certainly isn't a white Christmas in yeah. South Africa. Uh, it's a sunny Christmas, and I think for many families... Christmas means a, a lot of meat uh, outdoors. If you are fortunate enough at the coast or in the bush with a group of friends and family, and uh, the, the, the meal will be complemented with a variety of meats, uh, as we firmly believe in that protein over Christmas. Brilliant. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you, and we look forward to catching up with you January, February, when we come down to... Uh, Hopefully, still sunny South Africa and uh, Zambia at that time. And uh, uh, yeah, no doubt it will be excellent. Looking forward to that as well. Thank you, Leon. Thanks very much for your time. Thanks, guys. This podcast was brought to you by Roast PR Limited. If you would like to appear on a future episode of the Sunday Roast, please email admin at thesundayroast.net.